welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I am back yet again for yet another DC Multiverse video, and we have been looking at a ton of new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse figures over the last two weeks. Again, thank you to everyone for tuning in, which, oddly enough, I would say, culminates perfectly with a crisis on Infinite Earth's wave. And lo and behold, my order from the McFarland Toy Store finally came in. Now, this wave is significant for a number of different reasons. Number one being, it's only available on the McFarland Toy Store. And it caused a lot of controversy amongst DC Multiverse collectors because each of these figures were $40, unless you bought the entire wave, like I did, but then I used that coupon code before they zeroed it out. They took it away. So, in that sense, I did save some money, but these were expensive, and we're gonna have them open and take a look-see if any of them could warrant that $40 price tag, because let's be honest, McFarlane Toys, they delve into that retail price of between 20 to 25, you go up towards the 30 for the collectors, and then you have the mega figures for 40. When you bombard people with just, here's your $40 toy, it's gonna be the same exact as a $22 toy. People are going to have a problem with that, especially when we look at the Superman figure and you see that the new Detective Comics 27 Batman, you're getting the basic same thing inside the box which is what this Superman does entail. Now, the first figure of the wave is Kid Flash. I am not going to beat a dead horse throughout this video. We're going to find something to talk about, something in the positive sense, because I don't want a whole bunch of negativity. We've already done it. We know that this wave, the figures, are not worth 40 bucks but we'll take a deep dive look with number one, with Kid Flash just being all kinds of wrong in the height and everything else. There's not much in the box. That's another factor of this wave. It will be the same exact style of multiverse packaging. Kid Flash, Crisis on Infinite Earths. On the back side of each one, you'll see all the different parts and pieces, whereas Kid Flash comes with the leg, and then you get to see the Build-A-Figure. I guess we dropped the collective build nature. Now we're just saying Build-A-Figure, but it is the monitor from Crisis on Infinite Earths. And you get to see all the other characters, Kid Flash, Psycho Pirate, Spectre, and Earth 2 Superman. And speaking of Psycho Pirate, when they first showed this wave, I was jazzed. I go, oh man, Psycho Pirate, that is Amazing. He is number two out of four for the build a monitor wave. He is the other figure which will have a variance whenever that decides to show up. We know that the Spectre got the Hal Jordan as the Spectre as the variant, which again figures at the $40 price point, then having a rare variant element to it. Ah, come on. That's just driving people insane. Psycho Pirate comes with the torso of the Build-A-Figure monitor, and we have the Spectre, which was numero uno of this four-figure wave that I definitely wanted. If I left all the other ones alone, I would have gone for the Spectre. These are all going to be largely repainted figures, reissued in some way, parts and pieces swapped out to create new characters. Spectre makes up number three out of four, and he comes with the head and the cape for the monitor, which leaves Earth 2 Superman. A very older looking Superman for those not familiar with the story. It is basically the original Superman, but then he aged, which we now have the new DC Universe at the time of the comic book taking place. So it's an alternate version of Superman, but the original. You know what? It's just old Superman. We'll just go with that. Four out of four for Collect to Build the Monitor, and he comes with the arms. So this hopefully will be an absolute blast. At the very least, I can advise you if you are interested in these characters and you're on the fence, maybe this will help you in your deciding factor. Who knows? But sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the McFarlane Toy Store online exclusive wave, The Crisis on Infinite Earths, The Spectre, Psycho Pirate, Kid Flash, and Earth 2 Superman. Here we go. And while I got all you anti-monitors here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube vids. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Why? Well, we got old toys, we got new toys, we got daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you'll like. So, to kick it off, we have Wally West, a.k.a. The Kid Flash. And this one right off the bat is entirely too tall. Oh, also, 
for that $40 price point. He has two different sized fists and hands. One of them is a lot bigger than the other, and it's a different painted plastic, whereas the other one is just red plastic. Don't believe me? Look at him on his hands. One baby hand, one semi-normal hand, which the paint does not line up to. This is a $40 action figure, and this is probably the most egregious thing I've seen in a while from McFarlane Toys. It just it boggles the mind why you would release this that way. Kid Flash himself, it's just wrong in the sense of he looks like an adult. He needs to be more of a young teen, young adult looking body. The head portrait isn't great. It's a very soft sculpt. It doesn't have that fun, that energy that let's say the monitor has in his face portrait. He's going to be a reuse of a flash body other parts and pieces as well, especially the hands, <laughs> wherever they cobble those together from. But at least these open running hands work a lot better with the characters. So while the fisted hands are just toss those, it's just mind boggling. That's all I really can say. He's got the diaper. Is it the dud of this entire wave? Most definitely. And unfortunately, because Kid Flash is cool and he's very integral to the Crisis on Infinite Earths, he picks up where Barry Allen leaves off. And to see him next to Barry Allen, that would have been really cool to have the proper scaling. So again, make a new young adult teen body something smaller. Now, with Psycho Pirate, he fares, well, a little bit better. This is the Roger Hayden version. He was the main Psycho Pirate, of course, from Crisis on Infinite Earths. I'm jazzed. To have Psycho Pirate. I think he's a very, very cool character. He has this little spawn cape up top. He has his golden Medusa mask, which how cool would that have been if that was removable? That would have been amazing to have that element. The rest of his costume is okay for what it is if you don't look at it too closely. I don't think the little faces on his costume were applied all that great, also because you have to deal with all the creases and the sculpt of his costume. They are there, but it ain't great. From the legs, again, it's going to be a reused body, repurposed for Psycho Pirate. You have a big glossy cape on the back, which that's correct, at least. But then the black just stops on the back. And I'm pretty sure, I couldn't find any exact reference, but I'm pretty sure the black wraps around to the back. So again, much like the problems with Wally West, I would say that, yes, this Psycho Pirate has odd problems, especially a trigger hand, which no weapons, no accessories, the fisted hand is fine. Again, from afar, on your DC Multiverse shelf, you can have a Psycho Pirate. Is it a decent figure, especially for the $40 price point? No, absolutely not. And with Earth 2 Superman, this is where we're gonna start seeing a bit of an improvement. And what's really a bummer is that this is a brand new Superman sculpt. It's the Superman sculpt we've all been waiting for for the DC Multiverse line. And it was overshadowed by the ridiculousness of throwing this up for 40 bucks. And that's a real shame because it is really well done, except for the hands. The hands are enormous when you have these on the character. It just looks ridiculous. Also, are these supposed to be flying hands? Kind of, sort of. It kind of looks like a forced perspective. It also looks like he's on drugs or we're on drugs and we're just staring at our hands. It just looks weird. The hand problem at McFarlane Toys it definitely needs to be fixed. And I can't believe I have to say that. And in comparing Kid Flash's little mini baby hand to Superman's giant outstretched hand, you see the size difference. That's pretty funny. They got a, they got a hand problem. Anyways, Earth 2 Superman. This is a great figure in terms of the size of Superman. However, I do not care for the head portrait. I understand it's supposed to be an older Superman, but I don't think it's a good looking older Superman. Also, they are missing the white tufts of the hair. There is some element, a little bit of a, a white slash gray wash on the temples to the back, but it is not quite the heavy white that it should be. And for that alone, again, for the $40 price point, it doesn't make sense. In terms of the articulation, you will get enough rotation in the head, but in looking back to get that more flying pose, I would say that they definitely need to work on that for future head portraits with this body, because it's not perfect. But in that sense, 
Yes, it is an Earth 2 Superman because of the face portrait. But that aside, the body is perfect. I absolutely love what they did here. Home run, smash out. This is fantastic. And I love the details of the costume. You have the red shorts. I love the way they did the boots. He's got peg holes. This is fantastic. They even painted the red belt loops, right? And the yellow belts. But there, of course, has to be a problem. On the backside, the yellow belt just stops like psycho pirates. <laughs> How do these things happen? This is, again, just something that irritates the heck out of collectors because it shouldn't be a thing. The giant S on his cape is way too giant. It should be less than half of this. Is it an Earth 2 Superman? Do I really care about this being on the back? No. Does it look goofy as heck? It does. It looks ridiculous, but it does have a wired cape. So again, for the body type, for the new sculpt, for the wired cape, you are on the right track. This is a great looking figure, minus the unpainted belts, and then minus the not so handsome looking Superman. The articulation, I like what they're doing here, except for that. <laughs> Of course there has to be something else. The hands pop off way too easily. Now, you do really kind of have to tug at them. They're not just gonna fall right off if you're just holding the figure. But again, that is something at the price point. Too many, it's stacked way too high at this point for the number of, we'll say QC issues at this point. Now, the upper diaphragm, the waist, the legs, everything kicks out, he's got double jointed knees. So again, it's going to be the same type of McFarlane Toys articulation. There's nothing new, nothing crazy, but in putting him in a flight stand, getting that wired cape, getting the fisted hands going, it really does look good. And going forward, I can see all the possibilities of some Superman figures that I would love to see on this specific body type. At this point, with McFarlane's DC Multiverse line, we should not see this many QC issues with the line. One or two, maybe here and there, paint, I get it, but there's just way too many guffaws on this one. And with the Spectre, like I said, this was the one that I was really looking forward to. He is going to be a repainted, reissued body of the Martian Manhunter. However, I do feel like they've done more than enough to change this up and really make it the Spectre. So this is Jim Corrigan. I think it looks great from the boots to the gloves to the cape. I love it. I really do like this figure a lot. Also, I'm a huge Spectre fan, but the cape is very cumbersome, but also at the same time, very Spectre. So in that sense, yes, I do dig it. You're gonna have that same type of articulation and check this out, Detective Comics 27 Batman, the little tufts of the glove. That would have been the perfect gloves to have. Not these ones specifically, you have to re-sculpt them because of the body size, but you get what I'm saying. The legs, the waist, even the little tufts of his pixie boots, whatever you call those things, it looks great. Except for the back, and I know what they're going for here, it's that ethereal, quote unquote Kirby crackle kind of deal with comic books. But unfortunately, with all the weird white spots, it looks like the cape suctioned itself to the figure and I peeled this off over the years. It's sitting in some box and that's what happened there. So it doesn't look the greatest. I would say the main problem with this Spectre is the sheer scale. I would say that yes, for what I think about with the Spectre, he is a little bit too small. Being smaller than Superman Batman, he should be around their size. And let's not forget that he could be as tall as a planet in all of space and time if he wants to be. However, if you give him a flight stand, get him elevated, it kind of goes out the window and it just looks good with him hovering there and doing all his Spectre things. So out of the figures we've already looked at, Spectre has fared the best. Yes, I would highly recommend if you need any of these figures, 40 bucks, ugh, I'm, not, I'm not condoning that in any way, but this one is the best out of the wave in terms of having a solid DC Multiverse figure. Which finally brings us to the build a figure, the monitor. Not the anti-monitor, this is the good guy monitor. And I'm happy to say 
that out of the five figure wave, right, four to build this guy, they really did nail it. I really do like the head portrait, although I will say, while the paint is great, the sculpt is amazing, he looks a little bit too angry upset. Maybe more of a, a muted expression, however, it does bring a lot of personality to him, so in that sense, I'm mixed, but the paint alone, the sculpt alone, more than makes up for that. That's a really cool looking monitor. When you get down to his armor, more or less, with all the different variations of the color and the way he's drawn, yes, this would be the monitor through and through. The costume itself, from his golden shoulder pads to his harness, all the way down to his armor, that looks really good, and it's painted well. Now, in some cases, you could make the argument, is he blue on black, black on blue? Sure, they went with black, it's fine. It's a very plasticky yellow for the gauntlets. You have blue gloves, which are very textured. His little dressings right here looks good. It's all plastic with a little bit of paint in the middle, down to the boots, which again, the gauntlets and the boots will be that same type of plastic. His feet, toe articulation, peg holes, the cape is textured as bowels. But it does look cool, I have to say. Having this figure in hand, Totally changed my perspective of this. This is a solid monitor figure and is largely, I would say, a brand new character. So that's always a nice touch when they do that, especially after a wave like this one. However, yes, you have to buy all the other characters to build this guy, unfortunately. In terms of the articulation, it's gonna be solid McFarlane toys through and through, nothing mind blowing. I don't need to beat a dead horse on the articulation. You know what you're getting from McFarlane toys at some point. Some extra hands would have been awesome. The ab crunch, sure, that's kind of there. Upper diaphragm to the waist it really helps in getting him articulated in all kinds of poses. But it's the monitor we're talking about here. He doesn't do anything really crazy. He basically walks around and talks around in that 12 part mini series and that is really the extent of the monitor. And for that alone, that's totally fine. An overly articulated monitor, sure. For all those that want to take those photos, you can do that. But for me, I'll pose him just like this, walking around, doing all that crazy talking and walking on my shelf. That's the monitor, baby, and he looks really darn good. Now, to go back in time, just like Crisis on Infinite Earth, story-wise, just bear with me on this, Kid Flash, I'm not saying in terms of the height, he should be the younger version of this Robin. That's way too small. It needs to be something more in between, and that goes for the other Robin as well. In terms of looking at Kid Flash with all the other, let's say, Young Justice, Nightwing, those types of characters, he will fit in in the DC multiverse scale, but all these characters across the board are way too tall, except for Nightwing. Let's leave him out of this. In terms of Psycho Pirates, as a Flash villain, as a kind of sort of Batman villain, I would say he stacks up pretty well. He is as tall as these characters in action figure form. Do I see him as that tall in comic book form? Sure, why not? It's Psycho Pirates. But in terms of the anti-monitor and making all those deals for the planet homeworld of his choosing, the anti-monitor, as we know, is way too small, but in terms of one of those comic book panels way back in the day, yeah, it totally fits and just let it go. Now, in terms of the Spectre, with all the other magic users from Shazam to John Constantine, as I said, yes, Spectre fares too small on the scaling, but he does look really good with the other characters on your shelf. Now, when it comes to Earth 2 Superman and Superman, you can definitely see the differences they have just nailed this new Superman body type. I love the look of it. Again, minus the head portrait on Earth 2 Superman, but I'll swap a head out and see what normal headed Superman looks like on this body type. Because when you want to line him up with the first appearance Batman, first appearance Superman, you can clearly see that, yes, this Batman is going to be way too tall. He's taller than this Superman. And then first appearance Superman, Action Comics is way too short. So again, through and through, as we all know, McFarlane Toys definitely has a scaling problem. But in swapping the head portraits with this body type, that is solid. That is a home run. I absolutely love the way that that looks. Very all-star Superman, kind of, sort of. Very Superman for all seasons, kind of, sort of. I totally dig it because when you have Wonder Woman and you have the Nightfall Batman and you have this Superman, that is a home run through and through for me. The scaling, the way I see 
Superman should be a little bit taller than Batman. Wonder Woman, around the same size as Superman, but maybe a smidge taller, but at least she can stack up to him. That is great. I am very excited for this. I want to see the necessary improvements on the Superman buck body, but that just looks awesome. And then to show you the scaling of the anti-monitor to the monitor to Supergirl. Those all go together fairly well. Again, I would love to see a giant anti-monitor, but I really don't think it's in the cards. And when I say I don't think it's in the cards, I'm inadvertently putting it out in the universe that somehow, some way, it does make it into those said cards. And to look at the monitor with Superman and Flash, he's a little bit taller. I think that that works. I think that that looks pretty good. Again, it brings back all the nostalgia of Crisis on Infinite Earths, that was the artwork that was everywhere when I was a kid. And to see this now on my shelf in this form, it's pretty darn cool. So that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new McFarlane Toys online store exclusive wave, Crisis on Infinite Earths. And I want to say a special thank you to everyone who has watched my DC Multiverse videos for the past two weeks. I know it's been a lot. Thank you for bearing with me. We'll have a look at some of the new upcoming Walmart Con exclusives, right? That should be fun. So you know ahead of time of what you are buying. Is this wave worth it in any way, shape, or form? No. Unless you're a huge fan of the DC Multiverse, you've seen the problems firsthand. This is not worth it. Do not do the $40 per figure price tag. Again, as I'll say, if anything, the Spectre is pretty cool, but there's so many issues with these. And just to get pretty much the best figure to buy all those, I leave it up to you. But I would say save your money for later on when they inevitably bring these figures back somehow, some way. It's not going to be soon at all, but in the future, maybe a couple years down the road, you can get them then. So now you've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything crisis on infinite earths. And I'm gonna leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, as collectors, as toy enthusiasts, as fans of the DC universe, vote with your money. Tell them what you wanna see because this wave, while it is one of the best character selections ever in terms of what I want to see is not anywhere near the price tag it's trying to fetch. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.